Welcome. In this video, we are going to lay out the foundations of how JavaScript executes. We're going to see the execution context comprising memory and the thread of execution. We're going to see how those execution contexts are tracked by JavaScript with the call stack. And we're going to do all of this to understand the foundations of the language that are going to let the hard parts that follow follow much more naturally. This is a place to begin. Welcome to the video series. I'm glad to have you along. Topic. Good. All right, so here we go. Starting off, to get ourselves, we're going to get to the hard parts in a serious way, but to get ourselves there, we have to build out the foundations, the fundamentals, the principles of JavaScript. This is how, when we take a block of code, what do we do when we run code? I remember the first time I saw running code, I was like, what, what is it doing? It's taking words that have meaning in some application. In this case, this application is the JavaScript engine that interprets those words and uses them as instructions, uses them as instructions to tell our computer, in this case, particularly our web browser, what to do. Well, how does that process work? Well, let's see. But note these foundations are going to feel very, uh, very pedantic almost, very overly specific but they're going to allow us to understand all the hard parts to come. So here we go. What happens when JavaScript executes, in other words, runs, takes my code and starts doing it? What actually happens, Philip? It uh, parses through line by line. Um, it parses through line by line. That means it, it parses, that means it inter says, what's this word mean? What's this word mean, essentially? Yes. OK, and it's doing it line by line. Correct. And what a lot of the time is it telling uh, our browser, what all the time is it actually doing when it's taking a line? What's it doing, Skyler? Mm, storing, seeing that like, if you declare a variable, see okay. if you declare a function. Storing stuff in memory, exactly. So two main things we do when we run our code. We store stuff in memory, and in order to encounter that stuff to be stored in memory, we're going to go through our code line by line, take it and run it, execute it. And that taking the code on my night is known as a thread of execution. That is, it's a thread weaving its way through and executing the code line by line. And as I say, a lot of the time, it's hitting uh, code that's saying save stuff to memory. So we're going to map that out ourselves on the whiteboard. Here we go. <laughs> line one. We're going to map it out. We're going to see exactly what it does. And we're going to represent the thread of execution. That means going through the code line by line on this side here. And then we're going to store any of the variables or functions we declare on the right-hand side here. Uh, this is going to be our memory. Our memory. We're going to represent these all on the whiteboard so we can really follow ourselves exactly how our code is executing and miss nothing. If we have that, there's nothing we, we can't interpret, nothing we can't understand if we are going through the way that our JavaScript engine actually executes our code. There's nothing we can't understand. All right, so line one. Lewis, you have the honor. What are we doing in our very first line of code, Lewis? So on the first line, we are declaring a constant variable uh, called num. A constant called num and setting it to the value of? Three. Three, excellent. Next line, z. Uh, next line is a function declaration. And we're saving the function into memory, and it's called multiply by two. Perfect. And I'm going to represent that. Uh, <clears throat> so the left-hand side, there's our label. When I declare a function, it's tempting to think it's just sort of JavaScript just sees that line and goes, huh, function, good. But it doesn't. It's going to grab that label multiplied by 2. It's going to grab that label, and it's going to use that as a label for all the functionality, the whole function definition, the whole set of instructions, from the keyword function to the very end. And it's going to capture that and store it under the label multiplied by 2. All right. Next line, Skylar. So we're going to declare a variable name. So that you go through the stream. Ah, what? so we're going to declare, declare a constant name. So note, you did not go to the third line visually on the page. Why did you not go inside of the multiply by two function first, Skylar? Because we did not call the function. Uh -huh. Our thread of execution grabs num is three, grabs multiply by two as a function, grabs name as well, and it never goes inside multiply by two unless we call multiply by 2. If we don't call multiply by 2, we never go inside it. All right, so there we go. Name is declared and stored is will. All right, so 
What is this thing we've done here? As soon as we start running our code, we create what is known as an execution context, a word we may hear many times. It is the most profound thing we do in JavaScript. What is it doing? We've seen it. We've seen both things it does. It's the process of going, it's the power of going through our code line by line and doing whatever it says to do, and the memory in which we store any variables or functions that get declared, announced. Those two things together are known as an execution context. A uh, context means like a space, a space in which to execute our code. And in order to execute our code, we need the thread of execution that goes through the code and takes it line by line, and then a memory in which to store that stuff. And those two together are known as a context in which we execute our code, a space in which we execute, an execution context. And it start, we start off as soon as we start writing our code with a global one. That means it's going to take, we're going to see in a minute what's called a function level execution context. When we start running a function, we think we, we, our thread weaves inside and starts running the code inside that function line by line, and we create a little memory just for the stuff inside that function. But for now, we're in the global execution context. That means it's a, the stuff that we declare in memory when we first start running our application is going to be available anywhere inside of our application. So we're going to call this the global memory. And this is our global execution context. And we can almost think of it like running, like the whole application is a big function, which we can sort of think of as being global. And we're running the whole application code. We went through it line by line. We didn't write it out. We just stored the stuff in memory. But think of us going through and hitting the code line by line in our thread. All right. So as soon as we start writing our code, we create a global execution context comprising a thread of execution going through our code line by line and a live memory of stuff actually stored. Some of people think when we call a function, we go back up the page to the function R. When we encounter that function, we grabbed it and we stored it in memory. It's that place that we go and look for anything that we then later on refer to. A uh, posh name for the global memory is the a uh, global variable environment. Environment means the things around me, so it's the variables that are available around me in my code, the global variable environment. All right, perfect.